In this video, we're going to show you how to use the data uploader provided with the Locator Wizard. This data uploader allows you to easily upload your data to the Bing Spatial Data Services. It also makes it easy to geocode your data as well. This tool requires Microsoft Silverlight to be installed on your computer. To access the data uploader, simply click on the data uploader button in the top menu. When the data uploader first loads, you'll notice that there's three tabs to choose from. Geocoder and uploader, data source info, and job status. You'll also notice there's a Take Out of Browser button in the top right hand corner. By pressing on this button, you'll be able to install this application onto your computer just like a desktop application. This is recommended for users who plan on doing a lot of uploading and editing of data. Also note at the bottom right hand corner is a link to our terms of use. We recommend reviewing this before you get started. The basic idea behind the data uploader is on the first tab, you will create your job. This job will then show up in the job status panel. As you can see here, we've already got a job that's been processed. Jobs that aren't completed will also show up here and we can see what state they're in. And we can also gain access to information about the job by clicking on the info button. There's also a delete button that will delete the job from the job queue. There are two other buttons that may appear in these two columns. These buttons only appear when an error has occurred while geocoding or uploading. Pressing either one of those buttons will give you more details as to why the job had failed. The Data Source Info tab allows you to take a Bing Maps key and find all data sources associated with that Bing Maps key. To get started, you need to have a file that contains all your location information. This file must be in one of the supported file types. Currently, the data uploader supports delimited file types that are either delimited using comma, pipe, or tab characters. For those that are migrating from map point or multi-map, you can use the delimited data source files from either client zone or from the customer service site and upload them directly without having any issues. For those new to Bing Maps and the Bing Spatial Data Services, we recommend clicking on the sample data source link to download some sample data sources which you can use as a guide to create your own data source. Once you've created a data source that has all your location information, you can now create a job. In order to use the data uploader, you first need to select the job type you want to create. In this video, we're just going to use the geocode and upload functionality. The next step is to choose the input file type. The file type I'm going to use is going to be a pipe delimited one. And then the next step in the form is to provide a Bing Maps key. This Bing Maps key is also known as a master key as it's the main key that will be associated with my data source when it's uploaded to the Bing Spatial Data Services. You also have the option of entering a second Bing Maps key which is known as a query key. This key will only have the ability to query your data source. If you try to use it to delete your data source, it won't work. We recommend using a query key for public locators as it will prevent unwanted people from having the ability to edit your data source. Note that your Bing Maps master key and your Bing Maps query key must be different. For this video, I'm just going to skip that step and go to the next one. In the next two fields, we need to provide a data source name and an entity type name. An easy way to understand the difference between the two is of the data source name as a group and the entity type name as the name of the type of group. For this video, I'm going to call my data source my company and I'll set the entity type name to my locations. Now I can press the create job button. Once you've pressed the create job button, you'll be prompted to select a file to upload. All data sources that are used to create a job are first stored in isolated storage in Silverlight. As such, if you have a very large data source, you'll be prompted to increase the size of your isolated storage. We can then go to the job status panel to take a look at all the jobs that we have being processed. Jobs that have not yet been completed will have a yellow status icon. If for some reason a job fails, the status icon will turn red. Once a job is completed, it will turn green. At any time, we can click on the information button to get details of a job. You can also press the delete button to leave a job at any time. For now, we'll just let this job run. When a job is finished uploading a data source to the Bing Spatial Data Services, we can then use that data source with our locator. To use that data source with the Bing Maps locator wizard, you're going to need the, the data source name, the entity type name, and the access ID. 
The access ID is created by the Bing Spatial Data Services when your data source was uploaded. To get the access ID for a data source, click on the Data Source Info tab. Once you've entered your Bing Maps key, you can then press the Get Info button. This will then query Bing Spatial Data Services and find out which data sources you have associated with that Bing Maps key. The basic information that's provided in this page is the data source name, entity type, and access ID. Press the copy button to copy the data source information to your clipboard. Silverlight will prompt you to ask you if you want to allow the application to access your clipboard. Press yes. Now you can open up an instance of Notepad and paste the data source information to it. We can now see the data source information in Notepad. You can now easily copy the data source name, entity type name, and access ID information and paste it into the respective fields on the data hosting page in the locator wizard. When you have done this, your custom locator will be able to query the data in your data source.